Hello everyone. Welcome to the last session of Mobicom 2020. My name is Kyung Jin Lee from Seoul National University and I'll give you a five minute introduction of our system, Groot, which is a real-time streaming system for high fidelity volumetric videos. This is a joint work with my colleague Ju Wan Yi and my supervisors, Professor Yang Gi Lee, Tang Hyun Che, and Professor Yang Mi Kim. First, let's start with a demo of Groot. As you can see, volumetric video is represented by 3D data so that the users can move around in six degrees of freedom to view the content from any position. With the recent development of augmented reality and virtual reality technologies, volumetric video is considered as the next generation multimedia. To enable such applications, there are multiple system requirements. For the users to move in six degrees of freedom, the devices should be fully mobile without being constrained by the wires. Then the volumetric videos residing at the server have to be delivered through the wireless network to the client device. Since the content is generated in 30 FPS, a typical video frame rate, the frame update rate at the client should also meet 30 FPS. On top of that, for the users to really feel that the content is in 3D, the motion to photo latency for rendering should remain below 20 milliseconds. Here we show what we achieved with Groot compared to the baseline systems which suffered from multiple challenges. First, as you can see in the video, is the slow decoding rate of baseline systems only achieving 10 FPS on even the latest commodity smartphones like iPhone XS. Note that this is a measurement with our re-implementation of the original libraries, which we further optimized to improve the speed. Groot, however, could achieve 30 FPS, meeting the frame rate with parallel processing on the GPU. Even though we use the GPU for decoding, the motion to photo latency remained below 20 milliseconds. And lastly, Groot could save the bandwidth by almost four times compared to the baseline systems. So how did Groot achieve this? First key idea was to modify the conventional compression scheme and generate a parallel decodable tree to enable fast parallel decoding on mobile GPUs. Specifically, conventional systems uses special 3D tree data structures like OpTree to compress the geometry information. But this doesn't allow parallel processing resulting in a slow decoding speed. So we use the data structure to only encode the coarse representation then we modified the remaining structure to generate parallel representations, which can be integrated in the GPU rendering pipeline to generate the final high quality representation. Also with this PD tree architecture, we could improve the color compression rate. Since the parallel representation of PD tree allows reordering the points without having to change anything in the decoding process, we could sort the colors and pack them into a 2D image to apply conventional 2D image compression techniques. Lastly, again with the advantage of PD tree, we applied interactive and continuous user adaptive techniques, which removes the points that are not seen by the user to reduce the complexity of mobile devices as well as the network bandwidth. Here we show some quantitative results of the performance of Groot. This graph shows the frame update rate, which includes receiving the frame through the wireless network, decoding and rendering them on the device for different datasets. It shows that our system can achieve 30 FPS frame rate for all datasets. Next, this graph shows the latency breakdown results with minimum, average and maximum values for each component. The result shows that decoding is no longer the bottleneck and the rendering latency remained way below the motion to photon latency of 20 milliseconds. So in summary, Groot is a volumetric video streaming system which enables 30 FPS frame rate on mobile devices. We could achieve this by PD tree enabled fast parallel decoding on mobile GPUs and an improved color compression rate by localizing and sorting similar colors with PD tree. And lastly, applying interactive and continuous user view adaptation. Thank you for listening and I'm happy to take any questions.